Caregiving can sometimes feel like an impossible struggle. Caregivers may be torn between taking care of loved ones and trying to maintain balance in life. The good news is that it doesn't have to be that way. The Caring Generation with host Pamela D. Wilson is here to focus on the conversation of caring. You're not alone. In fact, you're in exactly the right place to share stories and learn tips and resources to help you and your loved ones. So now, please welcome the host of The Caring Generation, Pamela D. Wilson. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert. I'm your host. You're listening to the Caring Generation radio program coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, Channel 100, and Tune In Radio. The Caring Generation focuses on conversations about health, well-being, caring for ourselves, and loved ones all tied together with humor and laughter that are essential to being a caregiver. On this program, I will share 10 tips to answer the question of what do caregivers need most when talking about elderly care? Caregivers have much in common, even though all situations are different. We will talk about the commonalities and the differences from the perspective of female and male caregivers and spousal caregivers. The one common aspect that we all have, regardless of being a caregiver or not, is the way that our health and the health of elderly parents affect our daily quality of life. After health comes the emotional aspects of being a caregiver, acceptance, taking charge, feelings of loss, sibling relationships, role reversal, and coping strategies. To answer the question of what do caregivers need most, we will talk about all of these ideas concerning elderly care. Our guest for this program is John Prince. He is the owner of National Wound Care. National Wound Care's mission is to create a better quality of life for patients dealing with chronic illness. National Wound Care is a DME. That is medical speak for Durable Medical Equipment Company, and they offer supplies and clinical education. That means education to doctors and nurses and healthcare providers in the healthcare system. So people who work in home health, nursing homes, assisted living communities, memory care communities, they educate so that they can advocate about patient treatment of wounds, and infectious diseases. John will share tips for caregivers and aging adults about conditions that cause wounds, wound healing, types of wounds, how to manage or prevent pressure wounds that can become severe and life-threatening, and other resources for caregivers. Wound care is an important subject that we don't often talk about that relates to caregiver education and awareness that a lot of people don't talk about, and it answers the question of what do caregivers need most about elderly care. If you are with us for the Caring Generation radio show called Elder Care Workplace Solutions, you might remember hearing from Dr. Christopher Fagundes from Rice University. He talked about the effects of caregiver stress on the immune system. Caregivers who experience chronic stress and chronic disease can have more difficulty with wound healing. So it's just not only the care recipient, it can be the caregivers also. I want to share my experience with wounds, which is unique because I have worked in the care and the healthcare industry for 20 years. You may know this, but healthy people are highly unlikely to experience skin wounds that do not heal. The elderly, our parents, grandparents are more susceptible because they have chronic conditions like diabetes, stroke, dementia. Maybe they have mobility issues like cerebral palsy, Parkinson's or physical disabilities that have them sitting or lying in the same position for multiple hours in a day. The likelihood of experiencing a wound, also called a pressure ulcer, or in healthcare speak, a decube, which is a word actually originating from the Latin term decubitus, means lying down. What do caregivers need most is education about how to prevent pressure ulcers and treat open skin wounds before those wounds become serious or life-threatening. 
As a caregiver providing elderly care, you should be aware that pressure ulcers can begin during hospitalizations. The number of hospital patients who develop pressure ulcers continues to rise. Statistics confirm that 2.5 million people a year in the United States suffer from pressure ulcers and 60,000 die. These wounds are discovered after they begin to appear on the skin, although the issue is they start from inside the body, which is why they can be difficult to heal. Some of my clients who had extreme wounds had heart conditions or diabetes that resulted in weeping leg wounds that required wound treatments and leg wrapping. These clients were able to live at home with in-home caregivers. They didn't die of these wounds, but they died from other related conditions. Another client of mine who had cerebral palsy laid in bed on a hard mattress in a nursing home. He acquired a bottom wound that did end his life. Two other clients of mine with dementia who sat in wheelchairs during the day and needed help with mobility, they were in memory care communities, they acquired life-ending wounds on their bottoms. These two clients were in care communities that were supposed to be attentive to skin wounds, but the staff was not well trained. And unfortunately, when the wounds were identified, the staff was afraid to make a report to management because they were afraid they were going to get in trouble. It was my staff who actually reported the skin wounds. And specific to avoiding or identifying skin wounds, what do caregivers need most is the awareness that wounds can easily happen. Beyond awareness is the recognition that elderly care for heart disease, stroke, diabetes, dementia, and other conditions can result in these life-threatening severe wounds. As a caregiver providing elderly care, skin checks are essential. If you notice any signs of redness or an open skin wound on the body part of your elderly parent that's not healing, don't wait to see a doctor or don't wait to request a doctor visit, especially if your loved one lives in a care community. Very important to note is that skin wounds are serious and they call attention to the possibility of, believe it or not, poor care in a care community. What does that mean? It means that the staff may not be proactive in mentioning wounds to you or in seeking treatment. You have to be that person who insists that a wound care professional becomes involved. The memory care community where one of my clients lived refused to send my client, even though I was her guardian, to the emergency room for evaluation because they thought they could treat the wound. I knew better. I knew that they couldn't. I called 911 myself and spent the afternoon in the emergency room with my client while the wound was evaluated for treatment. We will continue to talk about what do caregivers need most and elderly care in the second half of this program. Up next is John Prince from National Wound Care with Education for Caregivers about skin wounds. John's company provides supplies and training for medical staff visiting nursing homes assisted living, memory care communities, and home health care companies who provide care for clients in their homes. He will share information that you must know about elderly care and also about preventing skin wounds. If you have parents or loved ones that have skin wounds and they're not listening this evening, do share this program. The podcast will be available in about a week. Helpful information and practical tips for caregivers and aging adults is in my Caring for Aging Parents Caregiving blog. It's on my website at PamelaDWilson.com, as well as the podcasts of this and all of the radio programs on the Caring Generation radio program page. How do you get there? You go to my website, you click on the media tab, and there will be a drop down for the radio show. This is Pamela D. Wilson on The Caring Generation, live on the BBM Global Network, Channel 100, and tune in radio. Stay with me. We'll be right back. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, 
examples and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. Have you ever felt like no one is listening or you're not getting the honest attention you deserve? Do you even know the kind of attention you want or need? You are not alone. Alice Aspen March is here to help. Thanks to Alice, through her epiphany and research over the word attention, there are solutions to the attention dilemma. Worldwide audiences have been enthralled and engaged for over 40 years with her visionary and pioneering observations. The kind of attention we get and give is vital to improving our lives and society. Alice and her weekly guests review game-changing insights for transforming and improving our understanding of attention, providing techniques for creating healthier and empowering behavior. Get a new perspective on a mainstream word. Tune into Why Our Attention Matters for fresh and thought-provoking conversations every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on BoldBraveMedia.com and the TuneIn Radio app. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert. I'm your host. You're listening to the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers live from the BBM Global Network, Channel 100, and Tune In Radio. With us is John Prince from National Wound Care. John, thank you so much for making the time to join us tonight. You're very welcome, Pamela. Thank you for having me. So let's start by talking about conditions in the elderly that can cause wounds. My my dad had eczema, and he would continuously be scratching his arms and he developed scabs that he scratched. Can that type of very simple skin issue lead to a need for wound treatment or wound care? Um, pertaining to your father, normally, no. Um, the scab develops, um, it falls off, pretty pink skin, everything's great. Where an issue like that um, would need wound treatment is if an infection gets in the wound. Infections are the bane of wound care um, because when a patient gets an infection in the wound, the wound healing stops, the wound treatment stops, and we have to treat the infection in the wound. And so for, for a wound, how long should it take for a simple wound to heal and maybe not get infected? <laughs> well... John Hopkins says approximately three months average, um, start to finish. Um, and in wound care, we, from a lay standpoint, when your skin's grown over, everything is closed up, you say the wound's healed. Um, from a, a wound care standpoint, there's still things going on. Um, as that wound heals and strengthens. So in a normal setting, it's three months start to finish. Um, that's, you know, 60% to 70% of the population. 30% are chronic where the wound doesn't heal and doesn't, you know, you do everything you can for it and the wound doesn't heal. And that's the, once again, the main issue in wound care. So let's say a person has a wound that doesn't completely heal. So maybe it's a diabetic with a, a ulcer on his foot and maybe it gets better and it gets worse and it gets better. How does somebody know whether they should contact a doctor or whether they can take care of it, you know, and it's going to just get okay, become okay. How do, what do they know? How do they know? Well, once again, it's uh, I'm going to try to simplify it. It 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 goes into context. Every wound is different. Every human being is different. Um, say you're a diabetic and you get a blister on your foot, you should go to the doctor immediately. You shouldn't put a bandaid on it and say, "I hope it gets better." You should go to the doctor immediately. 
Um, if it's a, a person who has a wound, I usually recommend if it has scabbed over, um, it's clotted, it's scabbed over, and, and that scab is in place and for a period of two to three weeks, um, and, and if it goes beyond that, you should go to the doctor. If it doesn't scab, if it's leaking, um, you should go to the doctor. So some of my clients had a lot of heart conditions, so congestive heart failure, they would have swelling in their legs, and so some of them had these leg ulcers. And it was interesting, they would, sometimes they would get better and they get worse, but they never seemed to go away. And we actually had wound care people come to the house to try to teach family how to, how to do this. So once somebody has a wound like that, does it require ongoing like attention and wrapping to, so that it hopefully, I don't know if they ever totally go away, do they? Uh, yes, they can. Um, but once again, it depends on what is the issue. A lot of leg ulcers, they have fluid on the legs, lymphedema. Um, if you don't get the fluid on the legs, um, the wound's not going to heal until that fluid is off the extremities. Um, venous stasis ulcers, um, once again, diabetics. Wound care is... At the same time, it's complicated, and at the same time, it's relatively simplistic. And and our bodies were designed to heal, and if they're not, there's an, an underlying issue that's keeping it from happening. And the main way it heals is blood flow. I mean, if if I could tell a caregiver or a patient one thing about wounds, it it ninety five percent of it is related to blood flow. And if you have a good blood flow, if you have fluid on the leg that inhibits blood flow, if you're a diabetic um, and you know you have high blood sugar, that inhibits blood flow. It inhibits the nutrients getting to the wound site. So once again, it, it really depends on the person themselves and the underlying comorbidity that that they have with a leg ulcer. But I have seen some truly high acuity leg ulcers heal up, um, and I've seen some relatively simplistic leg ulcers be dealt with for years. So quick question, because we're going to go out to a break. Is there anything that people can do to help blood flow? Is it is it elevating the legs? Is it is there anything simple? Yeah. Um, one of the simplest things is proper nutrition. It, mm. it, it, it plays proper nutrition. We call it um, power foods, um, high protein foods. Um, promote wound healing, good blood flow, you know, meat, eggs, milk, cheese, um, especially good hydration. When we get older, our skin, you know, doesn't have the same, we get wrinkles, doesn't have the same elasticity it had. Um, not drinking alcohol, not drinking soda, drinking water, whether you like it or not. All these things go into promoting a proper blood flow as well as that blood flow carrying the proper nutrition to the wound site. Perfect. John, we are going to head out to a break. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert. I'm your host. You're listening to The Caring Generation on the BBM Global Network, Channel 100, and Tune In Radio. Stay with us. We'll be back with John after this break. The opiate 
epidemic has reached crisis levels, and with so many families affected by addiction, opiate-related drug overdoses, and death, the time is now to have a real constructive conversation about addiction that could lead to better prevention, treatment, and recovery. Alan Charles, author and keynote speaker on drug abuse and prevention, presents The Alan Charles Show. Alan brings a message of hope, sharing his unbelievable story of surviving a 24-year addiction to cocaine and highlights from his memoir, Walking Out the Other Side, an addict's journey from loneliness to life. His raw honesty and courageous heart breaks the stigma of addiction and offers a unique perspective into the mind of an addict. Join Alan each week as he brings his listeners to a true understanding of the grip of addiction. It is only with this understanding that we can begin to heal. The Alan Charles Show, Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the B. BBM Global Network. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert. I'm your host. You're listening to The Caring Generation on the BBM Global Network, Channel 100 and TuneIn Radio. Let's continue our conversation with John Prince of National Wound Care. So, John, is there a difference in the types of wounds that the elderly experience based on where they live? So, for example, at home, in an assisted living community, or in a nursing home? Um, The answer would be yes and no. Um, You can get any type of wound anywhere you live. Um, However, as we all know, in a nursing home, your activity normally, if you are admitted to a nursing home, you have a very low activity level. You, You have a high acuity, low activity level. And, and that usually creates an environment um, that is prone to wounds, um, non-healing wounds. Home and assisted living, as we were talking before the break about nutrition, um, another simple thing to do um, and that can keep a wound from happening and also help heal a wound is activity. And I'm, I'm not talking about going out and running a marathon. I'm talking about activity. If you have a walker, using it. it you know, if you can w- go out for a walk, go out for a walk. And these activities just don't normally happen in a nursing home. But it doesn't matter. Home, ALF, SNF, you can get a wound anywhere, as we all know. And before the break, we were talking about, you know, nutrition and blood flow and things like that. What are other simple things that caregivers and aging adults can do to just prevent these wounds from even happening? Uh, and, and once again, it depends on your loved ones that you're caring for. Um, if they are, you know, I spoke of activity. One of, you know, as we get older, um, we slow down. And, and a lot of times you end up with a loved one that is in bed for a large amount of time. And, and we all know, um, you know, we call it turning and positioning, examining um, the skin. But the, but the simplest, the very simplest ways to prevent or manage pressure wounds, turning and positioning, proper nutrition, 
you know, once again, no sodas, proper hydration, and and those are the simplest ways. And if that's done consistently, you're going to avoid most issues. So what advice would you give to a family caregiver who has a parent maybe with a heart condition or diabetes? They are sitting all day. How do these caregivers talk to parents about maybe like doing skin checks or looking at their skin or, or you know, talking to a parent about, well, you should, you know, maybe turn and reposition yourself without the parents getting angry about this? Because I know that can be a worry of caregivers. Well, <laughs> I have dealt um, with a lot of caregivers through the years and a lot of patients through the years. And my advice um, comes from a personal place um, as well as observation. And that is uh, any healthcare issue is stressful. It, it, It creates a high level of stress. And then as you already know, um, there's different types of people, different types of personalities. I know you've discussed different ages of caregivers, whether they're a millennial, whether they're this. And my simplest advice, and this doesn't work all the time, but it's what I found to work best. If you can have a discussion or a suggestion from a place of caring where the person you are relaying this information to knows it's coming from a place of love for them, they still can get defensive, you know, but most of the time they'll think about it. They'll, they'll understand, you know, that it's coming from a position of caring for them and they'll receive it. But once again, unfortunately, nothing works a hundred percent of the time. That is so true. And and talking from a point of love, that is a good suggestion. So your company, National Wound Care, you do a lot of education for professionals about wound care. Where can consumers go to get good information about wound care? Whether you're a patient, whether you're a caregiver, um, my favorite place that I send people for information is healthline.com. It's health line one word dot com and you can go to there and there's a search bar up in the upper right hand corner and you can type in you know like we're talking about today you can type in wounds um, and it will bring up information but this information is very very simple to understand it goes in depth um, but it's simple to understand and it's in short bite. You know, you don't have to sit down for an hour to read through something. And it's probably my favorite place to go because of the quality of the information and and the quantity that's out there. Well, and give your website because that should be another favorite place to go, especially if we have any healthcare professionals listening tonight who might be interested in education. I know that you do a lot of that for the healthcare professionals. So what is your website? Um, the company is National Wound Care, and it's www.nationalwound.com. Perfect. John Prince, you are amazing. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Listeners, do visit John's website at nationalwound.com. The podcast of the show, if you want to share it, will be available in about a week on my website and your favorite podcast sites, Apple, Google, Spreaker, Spotify, and others. This is Pamela D. Wilson. You are with me on the Caring Generation live on the BBM Global Network Channel 100 and TuneIn Radio. Stay with me. We'll be right back after this break. Radio show host and coach John M. Hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. 
Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and to Tune in radio. Master of words, powerful player. What life changing words can Dr. Janet Smith Warfield pull out of her magical toolbox that just might mysteriously open a door you never knew was there? A door to free yourself from fear forever. Transform your rage into right action. Release your guilt. Position you into a life of freedom, purpose, passion, power, and peace. All quite suddenly, unexpectedly, and almost miraculously, with no effort on your part. Join Dr. Janet every Monday at noon Eastern on Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom. On the BBM Global Network, as she and her guests show you how words map our experiences, immersing you in a sound bath that relaxes your muscles, opens your mind, and supports you in co-creating your extraordinary life. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving advocate. I am your host. This is the Caring Generation radio program for caregivers and aging adults live from the BBM Global Network, Channel 100, and TuneIn Radio. The Caring Generation focuses on the conversation of caring, giving us permission to talk about aging, the challenges of caregiving, health, and everything in between. Let's begin with tip number one to answer the question, what do caregivers need most on the subject of elderly care? This tip is understanding. Regardless of the caregiving role, daughter, son, husband, wife, partner, friend, or another family member, what do caregivers need most is understanding across all areas of life, work, the relationship with the care receiver, family members, brothers, and sisters. And to this idea, I will add self-insight. For example, I have had spousal caregivers who say, If I was caring for my parent, I would know what to do, and I would have family support. But I'm caring for my spouse, and I have no idea what to do. Shouldn't I know what to do? Well, the answer is not necessarily. Feelings of loneliness, isolation, and depression are very common for caregivers providing elderly care, especially for spousal caregivers. In these situations, what do caregivers need most is insight and willingness to take action so that life is more than caregiving tasks. Are you a caregiver who has given up friendships, stopped attending social activities, and who might not be taking care of your health? As a caregiver, you deserve equal time, equal attention, and self-care. Only you can make this happen. Nobody else can change feelings of loneliness isolation or depression, or make you pay better attention to your health. While it's likely that other caregivers understand, because we all talk amongst ourselves, family members who are not involved in caregiving or friends not involved in elderly care, they don't understand. You want to create relationships with people who do understand and stop trying to convince those people who are not empathetic to be empathetic, because that just makes us as caregivers more exhausted. How many of you feel like you're talking to a wall when you're trying to explain to somebody how stressful caregiving is and they don't understand? Tip number two for what do caregivers need most is to find a path through that grief. You might be watching a very capable and very strong husband, wife, your mom or your dad, they're losing their physical and mental abilities because they have a diagnosis like heart disease, diabetes, or Alzheimer's. So in addition to missing this person that was a partner or a support for you, you might miss having a companion or mom or dad. Elderly care results in changes that may not be reversible, but may be manageable if we can get our thoughts around a situation that will keep changing. For the idea of grief and what do caregivers need most, we want to grieve. 
My suggestion is to write down everything that you miss as a result of becoming a caregiver. Get angry about it. Have a good cry. Ask for grace. Ask for strength and inner healing so that you can gain a new perspective about the situation. Gaining a new perspective is viewed differently by sons, daughters, and spousal caregivers. Women might dwell on emotions before gaining the momentum to take a step forward. Men grieve, they get frustrated, they get angry, and most of them will move into problem-solving mode. Spouses can move through a range of emotions that include love, feeling discouraged, frustrated, definitely feeling that no one understands, even their adult children who might be helping in the caregiving situation. In all of these caregiving roles, what do caregivers need most is to grieve and acknowledge that a situation may be far from perfect. This takes us to tip number three for what do caregivers need most? Acceptance. Caregivers providing elderly care shift part of their lives to accommodate caregiving responsibilities. Some move across the country. Others move elderly parents into their homes. They may give up promotions, change work schedules. Daughter and son caregivers can share this belief of the fact that we do elderly care because it's a responsibility. While men experience a lot of emotions about caregiving responsibilities, there's a tendency for them to focus more on being that dutiful son who does whatever it takes and is a problem solver or a strategist. Similar beliefs are held by men in the workplace who bring their skills from the workplace into caregiving. A lot of women will get busy with elder care. Women manage households, provide hands-on care, offer emotional support to elderly parents. So sons and daughters respond differently. Daughters are usually the primary caregiver, but sons will also step in and help when mom or dad need help. Tip number four for what do caregivers need most involves strategies to manage angry outbursts, impatience, and the feeling that the caregiver is doing so much that life is passing them by. Between juggling work and caregiving, a lot of caregivers feel that the plans they had for life have just gone off track. Spousal caregivers can feel the same way. Elderly care can bring brothers and sisters together to reinforce situations, but it can also bring back the idea that they didn't have a good relationship when they were younger. So there may be some resentment in there. Tip number five for what do caregivers need most is realizing that providing elderly care means that the caregiver will need help. Of all the most, this one is the most difficult. Women caregivers want to do it all. Men are more likely to recognize that they can't do it all, especially providing personal care and doing some household tasks. So men may be more likely to find paid help. Asking for help can definitely ease a lot of the worries and the struggles of being a caregiver. Coming up after this break, we're going to continue to answer the question of what do caregivers need most? We're going to talk about strategies for care and how to move caregiving situations forward when you may not know exactly what to do. Helpful information for caregivers and aging adults is on my website and in my caregiving library at PamelaDWilson.com, where you'll also find information about my caregiving book. It's called The Caregiving Trap, Solutions for Life's Unexpected Changes. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert, author, and speaker. You are with me on The Caring Generation, live from the BBM Global Network, Channel 100, and Tune In Radio. Stay with me. We'll be right back after this break. According to the American Nurses Association, there are approximately three and a half to four million nurses in the United States. So where do all these nurses work? What kind of roles do they have? What kind of education and training help to prepare them for so many different settings? What kind of impact do nurses have on patient outcomes? The World Health Organization has announced that 2020 will be the year of the nurse, honoring the 200th birth anniversary of Florence Nightingale, an international initiative called Nursing 
now is underway to raise the profile of nursing. The National Academy of Medicine has convened a committee to create the future of nursing 2020 to 2030 that will focus on how the nursing profession can create a culture of health, reduce health disparities, and improve the health and well-being of the U.S. population. Learn more and join Joyce Batchelor on All About Nursing, Wednesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on the BBM Global Network. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.BetterHomeAndGarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. BetterHomeAndGarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, BetterHomeAndGarden.com. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor coverings, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert, author, and speaker. This is The Caring Generation, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, Channel 100, and TuneIn Radio. Information for corporations and human resource departments about caregiving training and education on site or through online caregiving video conferencing and programs is on my website at PamelaDWilson.com. We're back with more tips for what do caregivers need most about elderly care. We've worked our way through a lot of the emotional aspects. Now we're going to focus on strategies and practical steps for what do caregivers need most and tip number five, which is that realization that caregivers will need help and having insight. So when we can place caregiving situations in perspective, The idea of learning new skills, gaining confidence, it's the area of personal growth and having an opportunity to serve as a role model for our children so that we're not passing down caregiving issues from generation to generation. The idea of what do caregivers need most is extensive because caregiving touches all areas of life. Tip number six for caregivers is recognizing that there are few easy answers and even fewer perfect solutions. Elderly care situations continuously change. Caregivers talk about change like being on this up and down roller coaster in a short period of 24 hours. What do caregivers want most is good care for loved ones. Fear of elderly care situations getting worse can keep caregivers awake at night. It can result in distractions at work during the day. Getting good care for loved ones matches with that idea of getting proper care for ourselves as the caregiver. The aspect of being open-minded to go outside of our comfort zones to seek help has a secondary benefit of helping ourselves as caregivers, and it sets that example for our children of how to approach health and well-being. Getting care for loved ones can also require additional skills for caregivers. For elderly care and what do caregivers need most, there are some skills like figuring out the problem, identifying options, creating an action plan. Maybe you have to do some research or make some phone calls to request information, meet with some people, other activities so that you can keep everything moving forward. This leads to tip number seven for what do caregivers need most. It's that big picture view with a positive and a persistent attitude of never giving up. Taking into account the emotional aspects of caregiving and the education and planning issues is where son, daughter, husband, and wife differences show up again. Women can sometimes be more pulled into the emotions of caregiving because they see themselves in the protector role. While men also see themselves in that protector role, they can sometimes combine this role with problem solver and financial provider. This means that men do feel emotions, but they're more likely to be led by facts and logic. Using work strategies can be one of the tools that answer the question of what do caregivers need most for successful elderly care situations. Elderly parents with multiple health conditions 
have more contact with the healthcare system and a lot more medical appointments. Research about the healthcare system confirms that men are taken more seriously by healthcare professionals because they're more fact based. Women are viewed as more emotional and unfortunately, and this is research based, the healthcare system doesn't always take women's concerns as seriously as men because they believe that we women worry excessively about illness and health concerns. There's evidence of this in the diagnosis of women for heart conditions, for pain, and treatment of women in hospital emergency rooms, and this includes your parents, so your female mother may not get as good care because she's a woman. So the qualities of being positive and persistent, never giving up, are very useful in answering that question of what do caregivers need most. By focusing on the idea of wanting good care and using that as a common focus between the caregiver and the healthcare provider, so the doctor, the nursing home, your conversations can focus on good care for your parents rather than the emotional aspect of feeling that the healthcare system can be insensitive, rushed, or inattentive because it definitely can. Regardless of sex, physicians are more likely to present options to caregivers and patients who bring in facts, ask questions, and seem genuinely interested in care. Showing up to doctor appointments or the emergency room and not asking questions, that is not the way to get good care. Not knowing what questions to ask leads us to tip number eight for what do caregivers need most to receive good elderly care for parents and loved ones. One answer is support from the workplace. In the area of flexible schedules and remote work when possible, getting good care takes being proactive. So you have to set and actually attend medical appointments with your elderly parents. You have to make phone calls to insurance companies about costs, investigate co-payments for treatments so that there are no unpleasant surprises, and even prescription drugs. Some of you might be interviewing in-home caregivers and other service providers All of this takes appointments that mostly are scheduled during working hours. Caregivers need the flexibility to do whatever it takes with the agreement with your employer that work will be completed outside of regular hours if that is necessary. Accommodations for elderly care require accommodations for employees to be able to get the job done. That also means that working caregivers need accommodations from their families. After school or other events for children, you might be trading time to provide care for elderly parents, and then you're working in the evenings or on the weekends. You might be a person who always had dinner on the table, and you may be trading dinners for helping elderly parents, so maybe your spouse or your teenage children are helping with dinner. Shifts in one part of the caregiver's life are likely to require changes in others, and that takes us to tip number nine and tip number 10. And these are the differences in how men and women prefer to receive caregiver support. There's a lot of research out there that says men prefer educational support and specific information about how to manage care, how to talk to medical providers, what to do in planning for care for three months from now and 12 months from now and a year from now. Women also want that, but they also want emotional and social support that they get from online caregiving groups or caregiving groups in person. We'll talk more about these topics after the break and how we can help each type of caregiver receive the help that they need. This is Pamela D. Wilson. You are listening to the Caring Generation radio program on the BBM Global Network, Channel 100, and TuneIn Radio. Helpful tips for caregivers and aging adults is on my website at PamelaDWilson.com. Stay with me. We will be right back after this break. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like... 
I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416 529 7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran-owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C., Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the EBM Global Network. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert. I'm your host. This is the Caring Generation radio program for caregivers and aging adults, live on the BBM Global Network, Channel 100, and Tune In Radio. Encourage your human resource department to check out my online caregiver program. It's called Taking Care of Elderly Parents, Stay at Home, and Beyond. This program offers specific steps for caring for elderly parents and information for caregivers to be proactive about health and setting good examples. So let's talk about tip number nine for what do caregivers need most? And this one is for men. Men say that they need and want information about caregiving support, planning, and problem solving. This information can be about performing regular tasks to identify health concerns, managing family relationships, and relationships with the healthcare system. After moving through the stages of grieving and acceptance, men more often want to make practical plans to address serious situations. Men say that they prefer access to online educational programs and information that is process and results oriented. They want time-saving measures, tips, and strategies. Some men, more likely male spouses, will participate in male-only support groups so that they have a social outlet with other men. Men who engage in groups with women attend these groups for tips on how to care for wives, more specifically to personal care and hygiene and other types of tasks. Women also seek online education and practical advice for caregiving for many of the same reasons as men. But for women, in addition to these practicalities, like I mentioned before, they have interest in social and emotional support from other women. Women typically share experiences with other women. Men may gather in groups with men for other social activities, but a lot of men tell me they don't talk about anything personal, including sometimes caregiving. 
These are the differences between the sexes in friend and social relationships. For spousal caregivers, education and groups are doubly important because of the feeling that adult children and other people just don't understand. Spousal caregivers may have given up friendships over the years. That means that reestablishing friendships outside of caregiving might be stressful because caregiving is such a significant part of life. Tip number 10 for women and spouses is to continue to initiate and create social relationships. This aspect is valuable and beneficial. You have others who understand your feelings. Caregivers share situations and tips with you. And you can ask questions and gain resource information. The big idea here is that if you're a caregiver, no matter what your role, you will get what you need from your groups. What do caregivers need? understanding, compassion, ways to process grief, tips to accept change, and to be a caregiver, strategies to manage days when we're angry, recognition that there are very few easy answers and even fewer perfect solutions. We want to have a big picture view with a positive and persistent attitude of never giving up, support from the workplace in the way of flexible schedules plus practical caregiver education and support that we can use. Information about caregiving, training, and education is on my website. It's at PamelaDWilson.com. My book called The Caregiving Trap is there. You can also visit my Facebook page. I have a caregiving support group on Facebook that is also called The Caregiving Trap, which is the same name of my book. Also on my website is my Caring for Aging Parents blog. Caregivers and family professionals, it is so important for you to speak up and to ask for what you need in the way of help and caregiving support, which is here every Wednesday on the Caring Generation radio show and on my website. You can also send me ideas for future shows at the contact me button on my website. Caregivers, help yourselves, ask for help. This is Pamela D. Wilson. You are with me on the Caring Generation on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. God bless you. Sleep well tonight. Have a fabulous day tomorrow and a great week until we are together again. Tune in each week for The Caring Generation with host Pamela D. Wilson. Come join the conversation and see how Pamela can provide solutions and peace of mind for everyone. Here on Pamela D. Wilson's The Caring Generation.